German Nazis are now winning elections, and it's only a matter of time before the fascists take over the country, apparently. But how worried should we really be? In this video, I'm going to try and look at the situation as objectively as I possibly can, which I realize is going to get me cancelled by both sides, but uh, such is life. The obvious way to tackle this subject is to ask what's happened, why it's happened, and what we should do about it. The first question is easy to answer. The other two, I'll, I'll do my best. We're talking about the AFD, political party whose full name means Alternative for Germany. It was founded in 2013, originally as a kind of mildly Eurosceptic version of the CDU. Its main platform was not that Germany should leave the EU, but that the Eurozone needed to be reformed so that Germany didn't have to keep bailing out other member states that had mismanaged their economies. But almost as soon as it was founded, it started moving further to the right, and by 2015 had got mixed up in the whole anti-immigration movement. Since then, a number of power struggles have put hardline right-wingers in positions of authority, while more moderate members have left in disgust. The party has now moved so far right that the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution officially suspects the party of being hostile to the Constitution, and also categorizes around a third of its members as politically extreme. It has many suspected links with extremist organizations, and its rhetoric is becoming increasingly xenophobic and populist. Basically, with every day that passes, it's looking more and more like an actual neo-Nazi movement. Now, I tend to shy away from using words like Nazi and fascist to indiscriminately describe anybody on the right. So the fact that I am actually on the point of describing the AFD in those terms should be an indication of just how far gone this party is. What's got people worried now is that over the past year or so, support for the AFD has risen to the point that it's now the second most popular party, according to opinion polls. Now, one of the best barometers for political opinion in Germany is the so-called Sunday question. Every week, various polling agencies take it in turns to ask the following question. If a federal election were due this coming Sunday, which party would you vote for? Now, obviously, opinion polls are not normally perfectly accurate, but this one does give us a useful tool to estimate political opinion over time. So this graph shows the results over the past six years. Uh, um, let me just highlight the AFD for you, make it easier to see. Now, at the moment, support is on average around the 20% mark. But interestingly, we have been here before back in 2018. Well, almost. Uh, we do have to remember that since then the AFD has moved further right, so the situation is a little different. But what's really caught people's attention is those two elections that the AFD has managed to win. On the 25th of June this year, the residents of the district of Sonneberg elected an AFD politician as their district administrator. While on the 3rd of July, an AFD man was elected mayor of the municipality of Ragun Jesnitz. And I think that as we move on to why this happened, we should first take a closer look at these two elections, because they're actually quite similar. In both cases, there were two rounds. If in the first round, none of the candidates gets more than 50% of the vote, then the top two candidates go forward to the second round for a runoff election. In both elections, although the AFD candidates did get the most votes in the first round, they didn't get 50%. In the second round, even though all the other parties supported the non-AFD candidate, the AFD candidate still managed to get a narrow victory. Incidentally, at this point in my research, I found a headline saying that in the case of Ragun Jesnitz, a recount had been ordered, but only one news outlet was reporting on this. And in order to read the article, I had to sign up for a trial subscription, which I did only to discover that the result of the recount was that a single vote was transferred to the AFD candidate. So it's no wonder that nobody else was reporting on it. 
In both cases, we are talking about rural areas with small populations. And in both cases, voter turnout was around 60%, which by German standards is not great, but it meant that in both cases the winning candidate was no more than a couple of hundred votes ahead of the runner-up. Now it's of course difficult to draw conclusions just by looking at the figures, but to me it looks as if the AFD has benefited from low voter turnout. Generally speaking, those with very strong political beliefs are the ones most likely to vote. So when voter turnout is low, it's the moderates who are staying away. In other words, when 40% of the electorate stays at home saying, oh, my vote isn't going to count and it's only a pointless local election anyway, that gives populist and extremist parties an advantage. Another point was made by the runner-up in the Ragunjesnitz election, who complained that after the first round, the national media got interested but focused all of their attention on his opponent, giving him an awful lot of free publicity. Now, I'm not completely convinced that this would have affected the outcome of this specific election, but the general point, I think, is valid. Looking at the bigger picture, though, what might be behind the current rise in the AFD's fortunes? Well, this map shows that party's vote share in the 2021 election, and just by looking at it, you can instantly see that support is highest in former East Germany. And in fact, I find it very interesting to superimpose on that map those areas where in those days people could not pick up West German TV signals. So what is it about this area then? Well, anybody who is about my age or older and who's lived in that part of Germany their entire life will have grown up in a completely different country. I was just a few months away from my 20th birthday when the Berlin Wall fell. What this means to those people is that everything they knew and understood, every value they held, every hero they had been taught to look up to, every aspect of daily life that they assumed they would be able to rely on, all of that was gone overnight. This meant a loss of identity, the country they grew up in disappeared, but also a loss of status. Because after the initial euphoria died down, they found themselves being patronized and looked down on by West Germans. They were assumed to be naive and uninformed. West Germans knew better. Now, keep that up for a couple of decades, and sooner or later you are going to get a reaction. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Imagine you got yourself a good, solid job as a factory worker under a system that praised manual labourers above anything else. And then suddenly you find yourself living in a society that values academic excellence and considers you a loser. No longer a valued member of society, but a problem that needs to be solved. If you're in that kind of situation, it's quite likely that eventually your vote is going to go to somebody who says things that make you feel good about yourself. Somebody who talks a lot about taking pride in who you are. That you, specifically you, have no reason to feel ashamed. Which might go part way to explaining why support for the AFD is higher in the East than it is in the West. But there is support for it everywhere, and it is rising everywhere. How do we account for that? It's a complicated issue, and I think there are many factors at play. But in my experience, populist parties always benefit when the voting public starts to lose trust in the mainstream parties. And that may be what's happening here. Now, I don't have time to uh, go into any depth about this, but in essence, if people are facing serious problems, they're going to vote for whoever is best at convincing them that they are the ones who will actually solve those problems. So let me give you a concrete example. Let's say a combination of issues causes prices to rise, but wages don't increase to keep pace. That means that in effect, you start losing money. And because you already were poor to begin with, you now struggle to pay your rent and buy groceries. If the government in power basically says, yeah, it, it sucks, but it is what it is, we could raise minimum wage slightly, how's that? But prices continue to rise, 
then eventually you are going to get impatient. And then along comes a party that promises it can deal with the issue by cutting taxes on food and fossil fuels, linking the minimum wage to inflation, putting pressure on the European Central Bank, and if necessary, abolishing the euro, lifting the oil embargo on Russia, and abolishing the TV and radio tax. Well, you might be tempted. And if that means voting for a xenophobic party, look, you have kids to feed. What are you supposed to do? Because here is where I get a little frustrated at the way that politicians, the media and the general public are reacting to this. Writing off frustrated voters and even entire states as nothing but Nazis and racists is not the way to see off the AFD. People will just stop listening to you. Last week, I found myself talking to a school student born to Vietnamese parents now living in a small town in Saxony, exactly the kind of area that West Germans in particular would view as xenophobic. That gave me the perfect opportunity to ask her if she'd met with much racism. She told me the exact opposite of what I was expecting. She said that in her experience, older people were not racist towards her, at least not openly. It was people of her own age. And then she clarified that she didn't think they were actually racist. She thought they were just being mean in the way that people of that age often are. Now, obviously, I can't draw any conclusions from a sample size of one, and I'm not trying to claim that racism doesn't exist or that it isn't higher than average in that part of Germany. But let's be honest here. The lazy stereotyping of all Saxons or all AFD voters as Nazis really isn't helping. Mainstream politicians aren't much better, basically doing a headless chicken act and blaming each other instead of tackling the issues that actually plague people. Immigrants are a convenient scapegoat, and racism is going to continue to rise as long as people continue to have problems that they can blame immigrants for. Which means that you are never going to solve xenophobia if you don't make an effort to solve things like inflation, unemployment, the wealth gap. But I'm going to end on a note of cautious optimism. While most AFD politicians are naturally boasting that the party is now unstoppable, one of their own numbers disagrees. Founding member and honorary chairman Alexander Gowland thinks that the AFD's high ratings have nothing to do with anything that the AFD has done. It's more about the mistakes made by other parties. If he's right, then that means that we can still turn things back around by making people's lives actually better and not screwing everything up. But what really caught people that the AFD has won. On the 25th of...